National Geographic presents Trajan's Column. Trajan was an ancient Roman emperor who ruled from the 27th of January 98 CE to 8th of August 117 CE. He was born September 18th, 53 AD in Italica, Spain, His, and he died on August 8th, 117 AD. His full name is Imperator Kaiser Nerva Traianius Diva Nerva Filius Augustus. Now, what made Trajan such a memorable Roman emperor was that he led Rome to its farthest expansion ever by defeating the Dacians, the modern day Romanian, in years 101 to 102 CE and the Second War between 105 to 106 CE. Now, to commemorate Trajan's great victory over the Dacians, the Roman people and Trajan decided to have a, a massive column built in his name. This column was named the Column of Trajan. The architect for this column was named Apollodorus of Damascus. He also designed Trajan's form. As I said earlier, the, tr the column is massive. It is made of 29 circular Carraria marble drums that weigh 27 to 75 tons each. When all of the 29 circular drums are stacked, they reach a staggering feet of 120 seats. 126 feet tall. Now, to raise all these 29 marble drums was quite a feat of engineering, and since this was ancient times, they didn't have as sophisticated pulleys and machines that we do now. So what they did to bring those marble drums to the top was they created something called a lifting tower. Now, a lifting tower was a sophisticated scaffolding and pulley system used to lift the marble slabs to the top of the column. To give the power to lift the marble, they had three capstans, each with 12 men pushing the capstan. Now, in each drum was carved a Lewis iron. A Lewis iron was a double-sided, almost nail, that held all the drums in place to provide grip so that they didn't slip off from each other and the calm went topple down during harsh weathers like rain. After the Lewis irons were in place and the lifting tower moved all the drums up and placed it on top of each other, the craftsmen began work to smoothen the marble and carve into the intricate designs. After the marble and the column had been smoothened out by the craftsmen, they began work on drawing the intricate designs into the column. These designs were so perfectly crafted they still remain today. And the designs consisted of the victory that Trajan had over the Dacians in the year 101 to 102 and year 105 to 106 CE. Each of these intricate designs were colored in the most vibrant colors possible. Those colors included orange, red, green, light blue, turquoise, and the most prized color of ancient civilizations, purple. These colors were meant to symbolize the true wealth of the Roman civilization as they were able to go collect these materials for a seemingly small project. Although sadly, all of these colors have been worn away due to the lengthy period of weather and harsh conditions it has undergone. After the designs had been colored and the column was beginning to take shape, a 25 and a half foot tall bronze statue of Trajan was mounted on the top of the column. And the column sat and rested on a pedestal that contains Trajan's tomb. After standing tall for 1900 years, this column has seen two world wars, a revolution, and the fall of the greatest empire ever to rule the ancient world. This column truly is a war diary towering over Rome. National Geographic would like to thank its sources for making this documentary possible. 
The first source is Building an Ancient Monument, Amazing Stop Motion by National Geographic and YouTube.com. The second source, Trajan's Column, YouTube.com. Third, Column of Trajan, Khan Academy. Fourth, Wikipedia.org slash Column of Trajan. And fifth, National Geographic Research Department, War Diary Show Soars Over Rome. Thank you, and stay tuned for next week's documentary.